Dan, you mentioned the atheist thing that 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 one really affected me for a long time because I broke away from a a, a deeply religious uh, culture, but I didn't tell anyone. I never I didn't tell mm. anyone I was an atheist for like seven or eight years. I kept it to myself. Well, I, I told one person that was the person I was <laughs> dating uh, because she was still, you know, a fundamentalist Christian. And we were like ring shopping at the time. We were really serious. And so I couldn't keep this secret from her for the next 50 years. You know, I had to I had to tell her it wouldn't be fair to keep that from her. And, uh, you know, religiously, like if you, you know, you grew up in uh, this fashion, you know, the Bible says you are not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I knew the consequences of this. So, you know, we broke up, but I, uh, she's the only person I told. And so I kept the atheism to myself. Now, Christian women were the only ones that I had any familiarity with, and they were the only ones in my circle. So I kept dating Christians. And uh, eventually I told them about the atheism thing, or I told them right away. And they all said the same thing. They all said they were cool with it until we got serious because then like what lynn mentioned is like oh well what are we gonna do if we have kids you know i'm gonna take them to church and you're gonna stay at home or do this for the rest of their lives that didn't sit well with them and um mm -hmm. uh, i kept falling into the trap uh, even when i came out and told people that i was no longer uh, a christian you know i i still fell into the trap of dating conservative or quasi-conservative women and you run into issues about this stuff all the time like uh I remember one instance where I was talking about oh, this this one girl I was dating. She was saying something about, uh, you know, students she had that didn't respect the United States. And I was like, OK, well, why is it a big deal? They respect the United States. And she was talking about the Japanese internment back in the 1940s. And she says, I think that was a good idea. They had to do it because we're at World War Two. And I was like that I'm sorry, fascism is where I draw the line. Like, I, I wouldn't I mean, that's not, I'm not going to be OK with that. And uh, or, you know, you know, you're you're watching the news and the person you're dating is like, man, I got to tell you, this this BLM group looks like a terror organization to me. It's like, no, I'm, I'm sorry. It's like this is it's not going to fly. There's a I think I think you're being far too uh, lenient with them. Damn it. There's a hundred different ways that, you know, uh, conservatives can like really F up your your entire vibe, your relationship without even trying, without trying to be purposefully malicious. It's just mm -hmm. that, you know, their their core fundamental beliefs are so malevolent and so, yeah. you know, devoid of any empathy that I don't see how anyone who is like a solid leftist could possibly date anyone on the right. And it's funny, too, because that's what the polls, the polling shows. The polling always shows mm -hmm. the left has a much uh, harder time dating the right than the right does dating the left because... Uh, a lot of them are just nihilists and they don't really care about this shit and, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, lack the capacity to, you know, see something from anyone else's point of view. I think it's the lack of empathy, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. that fundamental difference. I, I think, yeah. you know, yourself as a black man, if someone's like, if someone says to you while watching the news, like, uh, why didn't you just comply? Yeah. Then it's kind of like, it's kind of like the same thing. Red right? flag. <laughs> so, I, I don't disagree with you. You know, I, I bring up the, you know, I use the abortion one because that's such a hot button topic. But, but you know, I want to be hopeful about the future that we can, as we move away from things that are maybe racially charged or have to do with the right to life, that other parts of politics that we can talk about and have, like, you can have different opinions on, like Lynn mentioned, infrastructure, right? Or different ways people govern. But anything fundamentally requiring empathy for other human beings, if you see a lack of that in others, and that's, you know, thinking about BLM, thinking about um, abortion or trans any of these rights topics. Or, yeah, and, gay yeah, people trans rights schools, or yeah, it's like economics. A, um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you can find alignment on certain things, but I think the longevity part, right? Like, sure, you date someone, but the question is, do you want to have kids? And then mentioning the church thing, Right my wife and I are both atheists. And so we don't really talk about it with our kids, but my middle child has been bringing it up to people because I was talking to her about how we were born from exploded stars because we were watching Cosmos together and she tried, and we're in Texas now. So literally every kid is like, no, God's real. It's God sad. created us. And so she's been having debates like every week at school and feels bad. And I keep telling them, like, well, they're entitled to their opinions. So I, I, I think, I mean, you might, 
I hate, I hate to say it, but yeah, until people start to to be more open to like if everyone could come from the same place of empathy and, and dismissing this nihilism and not giving a shit right and being in the same position about certain things, I think someone who was religious or wasn't religious could be with someone vice versa. Like, you know how we talk about the hippie religions, like, you know, hippie Christians, where they just like the happy go lucky stuff. They go to church occasionally, enjoy the Jesus y parts of Christmas and things like that. That's fine. But like you were in in the area of fundamentalists, right? So you have people that to their core think you're a heathen. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so that to me, I could see as insurmountable. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of ironic if you really think about it, because leftists um, and and the empathy that is behind a lot of the thinking of leftists is absent from religious people who like we make this conversation about our politics, um, and and it is about our politics. But at the end of the day, a lot of the issues, like TJ is talking about, like is actually religious differences. Because when you talk to a conservative about why they feel the way they feel about gay people or about abortion or they're going to give you a religious perspective as opposed to a humanity perspective and Mm -hmm. i think that that's the fundamental difference between those two people like if you're going to use your religion as a weapon um to impose your views onto other people then you're going to oftentimes unless you're aligning yourself around and surrounding yourself with people that are just like that you're going to find a problem because not everyone's going to fall into whether whatever your religious views may be and it's, it's a variety of different religions and here specifically in the united states where we can have the freedom of religion um <laughs> then i just I, I see that that is more of the core problem than than anything else it's like you you're you you're using your religion to think that you're thinking about humanity, but it actually is void of true humanity. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's an excellent point. Yeah. I, I I think that the topic I want to slightly shift to here is the more meta narrative that's, that that is about this article, right? Because Washington Post made this article and I, the, the first things I was exposed to with it, were, oh, well, maybe conservative men should stop being assholes to women if they want to get laid, right? And that was like the knee-jerk Twitter reaction. And I, you know, that that's fine. It's, it's easy pickings. But I think when I was reading the last lines of this article about how um, a cultural shift might be necessary, one that views politics as part of people's identity, but far from the most important part, it reminded me a lot of liberalism. Like, it reminded me of a time gone by where like a lot of Americans just simply didn't really care about politics, that they were kind of rooting for the laundry most of the time, that that to them, politics was part of their identity. Sure, they, they were a Democrat or they were a Republican, but they didn't really like make that logically consistent with the rest of their lives. Like I know like for me and obviously everyone here, we're way more into politics than the average American. But I think everyone here, our politics are an expression of our core fundamental principles you know like like it's not like we're out here rooting for the laundry none of us are paid at least that's all i know none of us are paid by joe biden or bernie sanders or whoever to like be a spokesperson for them what we advocate for is what we just truly believe is the best possible policy to implement for the country or humanity whatever it might be and to me if you have the same information as i do and you're arriving at an opposite conclusion as I am. Either your ability to reason is dog shit, or mine is, whatever you want to call it, but our abilities to reason are not compatibly similar, or our fundamental core principles aren't. And if that's the case, I have many conservative friends. Two of my you know, four Mount, Rush- Mount Rushmore best friends are conservative. I can get along with conservatives. I can have a grand old time with them. But I can't date one of them. Like, like, they, like, like to, I, there were, I feel like there'd be just so much conflict in the relationship. But I think that yeah. this, the, the, the sentiment expressed in this article is that, oh, we need to like put our differences aside. It's like, no, we need to 
have more conversations. Like we need to be able to talk to each other about these differences for real and not yeah. have a conflict about it, but to test each other. And like, if we are tested in the, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, desire to get laid causes a lot of human behavior throughout history. The, the entire course of our species is just the quest to get laid. And like, I think that the answer that Troy. this- Troy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the, the, the answer that this article arrives at to me is the opposite of what we need to do. It's not that we need to just care less about politics because that's what affects real people in the world. We need to all care more and talk to each other more and you know utilize the desire to get laid for positive change i don't know maybe maybe that's just me because i'm from this position well the conversation think well the conversation needs to start with less vitriol probably Mm -hmm. and i think that's a big part of it i think that what you do tend to see from both sides is that knee-jerk reaction of you're a piece of shit Mm -hmm. right yeah or you're a liberal snowflake and 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 the the idea here is you know you talk about our personal beliefs our core beliefs are fundamentally built by our past life experiences so maybe that's where we start is those conversations start around like like if someone said like tj about up the blm thing it's not a couple of points maybe the conversation shouldn't go straight to the fuck you mean it should be more like thinking about because i've said that to people when someone said you should just comply i'm like you talking about just comply do you just comply with when the cops tell you to do shit it's like i remember i got yeah. pulled over one time i had a gun in my car i pulled it out of my glove box and set it on the dash like hey by the way it's right there cop didn't bat an eye i literally pulled a pistol out of my glove box while he was standing at my window he didn't bat an eye well i think it has a lot to do with indoctrination to a degree too because of how we're conditioned and the information that we take in right i think a lot of times when you you know people say oh well, you're a, you're a, a leftist snowflake or whatever well if we got into an actual intellectual conversation about why my fundamental core values are what they are um it would be a rel- it would be a relatively short conversation on your end or not your end but a conservatives end because a lot of times that's rooted in their religion i don't have to abide by your religion that's the whole point mm-hmm. of the, if we believe in this the construct of this country i don't have to believe in that at all what i believe is based on other things and i think that the hardest part for someone to do the hardest thing for someone to do is to understand that there are certain indoctrinations that they have been exposed to there are certain things whether it be in our educational system that is definitely there or if it's in your religious views look at tj he is he has literally deconstructed himself from the way that he mm-hmm. was raised into a completely different person why because he decided that that's what he wanted to do and he wanted to deconstruct that indoctrination a lot of people are not in that position and they get so defensive even if you have even in a situation where someone says like hey you know, why didn't they just comply? If I sat and had a real conversation with a, you know, a raging Trump supporter who doesn't believe that, uh, you know, and is like, oh, blue lives matter <laughs> to me. And I tell them, well, this is this was going on. It doesn't matter. The argument doesn't matter because you're not willing to actually look at yourself and deconstruct why you think that way or what made you think that way. You're blanketing something saying, oh, well, just comply. When you know that there are nuances to that situation and not even nuances that we can discuss, nuances we can see in actual videos Mm -hmm. where you can say, hey, well, they did what they were supposed to do. They didn't have anything on. But but yet and still you have this feeling and they and they're so grounded in that feeling that it's very hard to have a real conversation. And so I, I that's why I just don't really I don't really see that. I get that. I get that. You know, I I get I get that. I think. And well, so so it comes down to like so the like kind of core like, like homophobia, the pro pieces tend to be in religious ideals and beliefs, right? And then you have the idea of uh, and then the racism that definitely is more of an indoctrination around the people you are raised with, the geography you come from, and and those things are hard to deconstruct. But I, I, but I want to don't not deviate too much from John's question about talking more about it. We do need to, like, you do yes. need to go more into these fundamental conversations because it's well, it saves time for sure. I mean, TJ, how long were you in that relationship before you kind of had to end it? Like two years. Yeah, so that's two years 
with someone you really didn't have a future with because they were unable to accept. And you were, I mean, you guys had such a fundamental misalignment on something that was so core and important to you. You didn't want to be a part of that fundamentalist Christian life. And they didn't believe that you could be married to them. Right. You know, it's, it's so, this is an interesting topic because we do need I'm to just discuss tr- it more. But how do we how do yeah. we do that? Even in the sense of where we are right now, like with Palestine, right? You have a a a a group of people that are free Palestine against genocide, and then you have another group of people that are like, we're defending ourselves. Yeah. However many people die, <laughs> we're defending ourselves. Yeah. And even if we continuously, we could all sit in the same room and argue about it. One is based in humanity, and one is based in religious values that don't need to be imposed in anyone else on to anyone else and i think that that really becomes the issue like we could talk all day but if if a person is not willing to look at the humanity of the issue then it's the conversation's not going to go anywhere so we do need to keep talking but i don't know necessarily are we going to be talking to each other all the time because you know yeah, i'm sure have a relationship up, yeah or have a relationship. They're just going to be like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. And then they're going to move on, you know, as long as they can. It, 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 they may deal with it, like I said, for as long as they can until until it's it's not bearable anymore. Cool. I've been with the same person because... for the last like 19 years. So yeah. that's beautiful. <laughs> no, it, it's 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 a good conversation. There's plenty to talk. I mean, there, there's still like 15 other ways we could have taken this, but no, it's a good conversation on a slightly less serious note. Um, uh, I'll ask Lynn because I think she's the only one who might have been with a conservative man. I could be wrong about that. But have you ever been with a conservative man, Lynn? Um, no, I've had. You some also don't have to answer men. the question, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had I've had some conservative men try to talk to me, but right. um just as you know, as you can see behind me, I I I cannot <laughs> if you, you, you you know you don't give just, off this might be a closeted conservative vibes. You <laughs> Yeah, or yeah, and I don't I don't give off someone who isn't passionate about um real issues that impact mm-hmm. people. Yeah. And so um, if you're going to try to impose those types of things onto me, um, <laughs> I don't even know why you try. Cause I'm very, I'm, I feel like it's almost, I wear it on my shoulder and my sleeves. You know, like, it's mm-hmm. like, I might well have a patch that says, Hey, you know, you know what it is. So I, you know, when I see someone who is very conservative and it's not that conservative values are bad, it's just, they are. you know, <laughs> I mean, it Some can work, like I said, yeah. It can work if that if if you're aligned with someone who's going to be a little more docile to those views. But if you're going to be with someone who is very vocal um, about their you know views and fundamental values of, uh, of with humanity, then it's just it's just not going to work. And I just think that instead of instead of trying to force people to be, I mean, because like I said, we were having an argument about humanity and religious views for the most part you know so it's just like instead of trying to force people to do, just find someone for you you know i don't know go to church i'm sure they're there <laughs> so <laughs> you know so when it comes to uh like religious views and values and political views it's actually fascinating to me that i think john i think you're the one who said it, that that for the longest time, it was like standard procedure in American society to just like your politics were personal. They, they, they you never talked about them. They didn't play a big part in your life. Every four years, you'd vote for the president, and that's about as far mm-hmm. as it went. And I, I've never been that way. I've always been this way. Like I was this way as a conservative. I'm this way, you know, as a leftist. And it's just like authenticity and uh to your values is extremely important to me and it's weird that that's kind of abnormal well at least it's becoming more normal and i'm fine with that i because uh dan you were mentioning about uh like cafeteria christians people who just say oh i'll take this part of christianity but ignore the rest of that shit and that's never made any sense to me it's never made any sense to me at all because oh yeah uh either the bible is the word of god or it is not I don't, you know, it can't be partial. Now, it can partially be the word of God, but if it is, 
how do you know what is real and what is not real? And you were no, and God doesn't come down and tell you. And so I actually, you're, you're probably surprised. I, you guys may share this uh, opinion, but I actually do respect like fundamentalist believers more than the believers who have this, you know, ethereal interpretation of their religion because they actually believe what it says now mm -hmm. granted they pick and choose too but they pretend they don't like they they think that they're actually taking it all real and they find ways to rationalize the way around it now i think the people who pick and choose are better people generally but i mm -hmm. I, I do respect uh their commitment to their beliefs it's like yeah. god says that i can't drink i'm not gonna drink god says don't commit adultery don't commit adultery like i they 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 and they say and you should think the same thing uh i will which is weird that it, it, I'm going to dovetail into this point here, but one of you guys mentioned about- No, you may not like them. So you may not I like them, want yeah. to hang out with them, but you can respect the conviction they right. have- Yes, I do. For I what do. they believe in. I, I, I agree respect with you. I mean, a hell of a lot more. Yeah. Because- yeah. I, I can too. Yeah. I can respect that. Because it's Just like, don't impose it on anyone else. Well, no, that, I, yeah, exactly. But, but in well, order, in part, order but to but fundamentally do you too. have to impose it You have to, yes. I don't like really very many of them at all. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm sure TJ agrees. Uh, I think most of them, while they are fundamental believers, like I remember sitting in this one house that I was renting a room in, and she was literally talking about, oh, you know, I want to raise my kids to be uh, good Christians so they can get to heaven. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back up to my room now. <laughs> and 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 I'm like, it's a divine reward. That's That's your thing. Gotcha. Okay, doing this well, for divine reward. But but I agree. I agree with you. You can respect people in any field who have the mm -hmm. courage of their convictions. Yeah. But I also lack respect for people that are not open to other people's perspectives right. and views and a willingness to hear, learn and potentially change. And I think yeah. that's really a more fundamental characteristic that we need to have. So, Lynn, that guy, I don't want to take too much time because I want to try and get the other topic, too. But Lynn, that conservative guy, let's say he'd come up to you and you had gotten started on that. And he said, well, tell me more about you. I'm kind of curious about how you kind of came to your point of view and your perspective on things. I'd like to hear more about it and kind of under trying to understand where you were coming from and learning how you got to where you are and being open to that. Would you have a different view on a guy like that? Okay, just describe that a person that doesn't you... exist. I was thinking the same thing. Oh my God, I, was no, say, I was thinking the exact same thing. Say, but yeah. yeah, you could have. We of course we can have a conversation. I, I I'm a, a, an intellectual. I love to talk about. You know, we, we I can I can understand you, and I can I can hear you. But even if the, even if we are having that discussion, um, I, I don't think that I would want to be the person to change someone's mind. That and also I can't change anyone's mind. You the, any choice that you make for yourself, any change that you make. It has to be something that you want for yourself. No one could have convinced TJ to be a different person. He chose that for himself. And through mm -hmm. that and through his conviction to want to be different, um, he changed his mind. Like, yeah, sure, we could have a conversation with that guy. But at the end of the day, um, I hope that you continue on your path. And <laughs> maybe we'll- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're not going to- yeah. yeah, like, yeah, you're not going to try and, like, marry the guy, right? No. But you're no, going to be I'm open to that. Person. You're going to be- you're going to be open to that. It's going to be interesting to you, potentially engaging. You might learn something from him. He might learn something from you. But fundamentally, y'all ain't going home together. No. No. Exactly. No. And it's but, but, I, but I respect I, I respect you more for having a conversation as opposed to go. trying to just, you know, dismiss it. But at the, but at the end of the day, yeah, yeah. that's a journey for you to take, <laughs> not for me to take with you. Right. Let's, let's move on and to the I would last feel topic. The same, so, I would feel the same if it was the other way around you know yeah. you could i couldn't just have a conversation with someone religious and you believe that i'm going to be a religious fundamentalist you would be like no uh you're gonna have to go and you know do your own journey and, and find your yeah. way you know 